we continue on here with a big section. This is called Life Insurance Policies. Quite a few questions come out of here, really conceptual in nature. So we have to have a very good understanding here. Now, what we mainly talk about is the two cl big classes of life insurance. We talked in the previous section, there was three classes of life insurance, group, ordinary, and industrial. Now, we're going to really focus mainly on group and ordinary, and more specifically on ordinary types of life insurance. So there were three types, as we learned earlier, which you could remember with this acronym WET. So we have number one being whole life. Number two being endowments. And number three being term. So what we'll do is we're going to focus on these three types of ordinary life insurance and really try and learn some things about these policies. Now, just like anything, people have choices. The main objective here is we're creating life insurance. But there are different ways that we can do that using various policies. So you've got to really be an expert on all of them for your exam because you have quite detailed questions in this area. So we're going to go right down this uh, little deal here up here in the upper left-hand corner of the board, a uh, little acronym WET for the three types of ordinary life insurance, starting with whole life. So we're going to skip ahead to page 34 and go right in the center of the page to that heading whole life. And everything on here for the next few minutes that we're going to cover is going to be whole life. So a few things, two things in specific that you need to know for whole life is uh, that it is permanent and also that it is a cash value policy. So hence the name whole life. Out of the three, it's the only permanent life insurance policy that we're going to talk about here in this class. So there's a number of different variations of this traditional whole life. Now, with the basic definition of whole life, we want to know how long a person's covered. Well, if they buy a whole life policy, they are covered till they die or they hit age 100. So by, based on statistical data, uh, the insurance companies determine, based on the law of large numbers that you know, using 10 million lifespans, that everybody dies by age 100. So, is that always true? I mean, you know, you're 99, your birthday's tomorrow, clock gets midnight, poof, you're gone? Well, no, of course not. You know, I've, uh, both my grandparents uh, passed this past year, uh, both 96 years old, okay? So, you know, some people live that long, some people don't. I think the oldest living person ever, I think it was 126, something like that. So they outlived their life insurance. Hey, we said it's permanent. Well, they outlived it, didn't they? Well, a lot of people don't, okay? So in whole life, you're always covered till you die or you hit age 100. So that's the coverage period, we could say. Now, the first type of whole life we're going to cover is that one in the center of the page, continuous premium, also known as straight life. So you're going to have a couple questions on your exam on this policy. So we'll just take a look. We'll give an example and see really how the policy works. Okay, so we'll say that we have a person who is age 30, comes in to see us, and wants to buy this continuous premium whole life policy. Well, if they do at age 30, they're covered till they die or they hit age 100. Now, the amount of coverage they want after speaking with us and we ask some questions and we determine that they should purchase $100,000 of coverage. This is referred to as their face amount, or also known as death benefit. So that's the dollar amount that will pay out if the insured dies during that policy period, in, in my example. OK, so um, we determine based on their age, because remember here, they're going to have to fill out an application. They might have to go do a physical exam, HIV test. Uh, underwriter might do a credit report on them. We determine based on their age, all that stuff, dangerous hobbies, everything, that their premium is going to be $1,000. And we'll say, just for example, that this is an annual premium. Now, the premium for this policy is level which means it never changes through the life of the policy. So this person will pay $1,000 for $100,000 of coverage. They pay $1,000 per year. Okay, so here's this person's question though. Well, they want to know what happens if they die. Okay, so say that they die any time during this policy period. Well, that's going to trigger the benefits to be paid out to their beneficiary tax-free. So here's where we first learned. Death benefits paid out of life insurance 
are tax free. So always remember that for your exam. So who designates the beneficiary? This 30 year old. Remember, they're purchasing life insurance on their own life for whatever reason. Maybe they're married, they have young kids, and uh, they have a lot of outstanding debt. Okay, so they want life insurance to provide some additional protection. Okay, so while well, we explain to them what happens if they die, 100000 gets paid out tax-free to their beneficiary, whoever that may be, spouse, children, whoever. Um, well, they want to know what happens if they live, because they're paying a $1,000 premium. Well, they pay this, and this policy, continuous premium, or straight life, they pay it every year, every year, until either they die or they hit age 100. Now, here's what's guaranteed in the policy. If they live to age 100, when the policy is first sold, the insurance company guarantees their cash value will equal their amount of protection and will send them a check for the face amount or the cash value, whichever of the two is higher. So you have a guarantee if you buy this policy, if you don't die, they will give you your money back. If you hit age 100, they'll send you a check for 100,000 bucks. Okay, so that's basically how the policy works. Now, a couple questions you may have. Taxes. We want to know about taxes. More specifically, what if this person decides some point down the road they don't want the policy anymore? Okay, so let's take a look at that. Let's say uh, they didn't die, they're alive, and, well, let's do this first, okay? Let's say that the person does die. And let's say this is my policy, okay? I have a $100,000 whole life policy, and I name you as my beneficiary, okay? We're, we're lifelong friends, and I name you. I want you, when I die, to get 100000 bucks. Can I do that? Can I name you my beneficiary? Yes. You have no insurable interest, though. Can I name you my beneficiary? Yes. You don't, there's no insurable interest needed to name someone as beneficiary. You name anybody you want. You don't need their consent or anything. Okay, so I name you as the beneficiary. Okay, I've got this policy. I die, uh, you know, I go to the circus and I participate in the High Wire Act uh, just as a member out of the audience and I fall off and die, okay? And you see this in the news and you're sad because I'm dead but um, your pain's eased a little bit because you're getting 100,000 bucks, okay? So you get that 100,000 bucks and here's what you do with it. You go out and buy one of those brand new H2s and uh, you get a big mural painted on the side of, uh, it says, in memory of Scott, rest in peace. You know, it's got my picture on there. And on the other side, you know, your picture of you smiling, holding $100 bills. Okay? That's what you do at the death benefit. Can you do that? Sure. You do whatever you want. It's your money, right? So I die. You tell the insurance company, hey, send me a check, 100000 bucks. Not taxable to you. Do whatever you want with the money. Go to Hawaii, uh, buy a new house, whatever you want. It's your money. Okay? Okay, well, let's say I didn't die. Say I went to the circus, everything was great, I had so much fun, I'm, now I'm going to become a high wire guy, do the high wire act. So I'm still alive. And I'm older now. Remember, I bought this policy when I was 30. Now I'm 65. And I don't want the policy anymore. I do not want the policy anymore. So I cancel it. Okay, I tell the insurance company, I don't want the policy anymore. My kids are grown. I'm retired. No need for it. So I cancel the policy at age 65 right here. Will I receive any money from the insurance company? The answer is yes. And here's where it comes from. I said up here, this is a cash value policy. Well, what does that mean? That means that from my premium, the insurance company will subtract all their expenses. And then at some point in time, after they subtract their expenses, there's going to be money left over from my premium. And the insurance company is going to deposit that into an account, which we'll represent with this bull, which starts at zero. And the money will accumulate in there, in this account. And on top of that, the insurance company is going to pay me interest on this money. This money here is called my cash value. So my cash value is the, the premium I pay after expenses, plus the interest the insurance company will pay. And this interest is tax deferred. Remember, this is a fixed product. So we said in fixed products like whole life, the interest they pay you is guaranteed. So the insurance company here will guarantee a minimum. Okay, well, is that risky to them? Sure. Remember we said in fixed products, 
The investment risk is to the insurance company. Now, here's the key, though, to this money, the cash value. The cash value is only a benefit to the insured while they're alive. Because if they die, the insurance company keeps it and uses it to offset their risk. Meaning, they use it to help pay out the death benefit. Okay, so back to my example. I said I was 65 and I canceled my policy. I have cash value there. And we'll say that my cash value is 40,000 bucks. Okay, so I cancel my policy. The insurance company has to send me that cash value. So they cut me a check for 40,000 bucks. Here's a question to you though. Do I have to pay any tax on that money? And the answer is yes. So here's how it works for tax purposes for whole life insurance. If I take cash surrender, which is canceling the policy, I subtract from the amount I receive, I subtract from there, my cost basis, which is the amount that I paid into the product, which was back here, my premium. Okay, my premium is my cost basis. My cost basis is the amount of money that I've already paid tax on that I'm putting into the product. So all we need to do is find out how much I paid in per year and how many years I paid it in. I paid in a thousand per year, right? Well, when I'm 65, how much have I paid in? 35,000, correct? So we subtract from the 40, 35,000, and we're left with 5,000 left over. Well, that is taxable as ordinary income. You will never have capital gains tax on anything related to this exam. It's always going to be ordinary income. $5,000 taxable as ordinary income. Well, where did this money come from? It came from right here, the interest, the 4% or 5% or 3%, whatever it was, that's been accumulating on that money in my cash value for years, which was tax deferred until we got it out. Okay, now I know that's a lot, but let me go back here to the start of the policy. Most cash value policies do not have a cash value for the first three years, the reason being that's when the expenses are the highest. After the first three years, as expenses decrease, then there's some money left over in your premium. They deposit it in this account here where it slowly grows and interest grows on top of that, tax deferred until you withdraw. So, this leads me to my last question on this. Okay, let's change the scenario again. Um, say that I am 65 now and I still want my insurance. I don't want to cancel it, but I want to access some of that money. Do I have any other option that I can choose? The answer is yes. I can actually take a loan against my cash value. So I'm retired now, I'm 65, and I decide that I want to buy a Winnebago. So I'm gonna buy a Winnebago, and me and my wife are gonna cruise around the US so I need some money though for a down payment. Now I've got $40,000 in my cash value there, so I'm gonna take a loan out against my cash value. Why would I do this? Well, when I bought this policy 35 years ago, it had a loan provision right in the policy and it stated, if I was to take out a loan, that I will pay a fixed interest amount on the loan. Maybe it was 2%, maybe it was 3%. And now maybe currently, 35 years later, interest rates are 18%. Well, that's a good reason to take a loan out against your life insurance. A second good reason is loans are not taxable from life insurance contracts. Okay, so let's see, though, how it affects the policy. Now, remember, they, they're keeping my cash value as collateral, and they're loaning me, the insurance company's loaning me their own money. Okay, so I say that I want to take a loan of, say, 20000 bucks. So I do. Insurance company gives me a loan, 20000 bucks. I use that as my down payment on the Winnebago, and I buy the Winnebago, and I cruising around the country. Okay, now, it's been a long trip. I'm going from Florida to Washington, and some, somewhere in the Midwest, some young kid, some young punk pulls up next to me, and he wants to race me. In my Winnebago, he wants to race me, and I think I can take him. So we do. We race, and I've got him by a long shot, okay? But 18-wheeler pulls out in front of me, crash right into it. Winnebago explodes, and I'm dead. Now, remember, you're the beneficiary of this policy. I died. I took out a loan. Is my policy still in force? 
Yes. What will you receive as the death benefit? $100,000 minus the loan, minus any interest I owe on the loan. Okay, so I'm supposed to make these loan payments back to pay this loan off. However, if I don't, and an outstanding loan plus interest on the loan ever exceeds the cash value they have as collateral for the loan, the policy will lapse, meaning no more coverage. So in my example here, they paid you $100,000 minus the loan, minus interest on the loan. That's what they're going to do. So that's my other option I have. I could take a loan out against my cash value. Now remember earlier though, when I canceled the policy, if I canceled the policy and then died, you're not getting anything because the policy's over if I cancel it. Okay, so those are the two options I have. I could cancel the policy, get all the money out, or I could take a loan out against my cash surrender. Well, let's say that I do neither of. I keep working, everything's great, I still want my policy, so I keep paying my premium. Now, hey, what do they call this policy? Continuous premium. That means if I'm 95, I'm still going to have a $1,000 premium, right? True. Okay, well, you sold me this policy when I was 30. Now, bingo, I hit age 100. So I'm going to have my big centennial celebration, big birthday party. You're invited along with all my friends. So I run out the tallest building in town here, right on the roof, flying in a helicopter, jump out there, and it's party time, okay? 100 years old. Now you come to the party, all you know, dressed to the nines, and you come up to greet me and say, hey, Scott, you know, thanks for buying this policy from me those 70 years ago. You know, keep in mind, you're, what, 102 maybe, or maybe you're a little younger, you're 96. Say, hey, Scott, you know, this great party, love it, it's rocking. Uh, thanks for buying this policy from me 70 years ago. And by the way, here's your birthday card. So you give me a birthday card, and I know this, that the address on it is from the insurance company that you represented when you sold me this policy. And so I open it up. It says, um, Scott, thank you very much uh, for living so long. Happy birthday, 100 years old. Thanks for living so long. We never had to pay out $100,000. And while we had your money, and we were paying you, whatever, 4%, we were earning 10% on it for 70 years. Thank you very much. And by the way, here's your money back. And out falls the check for 100,000 bucks. So you want to know how do insurance companies make money? Right there. It's like a bank. You go to the bank, you put your money in your savings account, they pay you what? 1%, 2%, 3%. What do you think they're earning? 5%, 6%, 7% on your money. Same concept here. Well, hey, I'm, a, I'm 100 years old. Out falls a check for $100,000. I say, all right, drinks for everybody on me. Birthday boy, okay? You say, wait, hold on, Scott. Hold on a second, right? You haven't died. You're still alive. So this is not a death benefit, which means what? I'm going to have to pay taxes, aren't I? Well, how do I figure out how much I'm going to have to pay in tax? You subtract from what you get, what you paid. I paid in $1,000 every year for how many years? Age 30 to age 100, 70 years. So I paid in 70,000 bucks. So I will have to pay ordinary income tax on 30,000 bucks. So you explain this to me. And then I fall dead of a heart attack. Okay, well, Hey, I've hit 100, I got the money, no more life insurance, right? Lived 100, seen a lot of things, that's the way it goes. But that's exactly how it would work. So, whole life, you see there's a lot of facets to it, a lot of intricacies within there. The good news is, everything we cover in this first policy, any question you have about any type of whole life policy, you can answer it based on this policy, because this is the foundation, this is the first type. They call it continuous premium because you pay forever. Um, well, one last thing I want to mention, okay, because I, I kind of left you hanging there when I said the insurance company keeps the cash value when the person dies. Well, that's true. Now, you're probably wondering, how can they keep that premium of $1,000 level? I mean, every year you pay $1,000. I'm 95, I pay 1000 bucks. Well, when you die, what do they do with the cash value? They keep it and use it to help pay out the death benefit. So, as your cash value in here increases... What happens to the risk of the insurance company? Goes down, right? The more money they have in this pot, the money grows higher the older I get, the more money they have to offset their risk. 
So when is the risk highest to the insurance company? You got it right there. First three years, no cash value. I die, they pay out 100,000 bucks. That's right out of their pocket. Well, where's that money coming from? From the people that lived to be 100. Okay, so you see in life insurance, it's really death insurance, one peril covers death. Does the insurance company want you to die or do they want you to live? They want you to live as long as you can. So they send you out the letters, stop smoking, uh, start working out, stop eating such a high fat diet, no Krispy Kremes, uh, no drinking, no smoking, right? We want you to live forever, okay? So that's that paragraph right in the center of the page as you see. Now, in the bottom of page 34 and on, we're still talking about whole life policies. However, now what we're messing around with was this. People did not like the fact that they would have to pay their premium forever. Continuous premium? No, that's no fun. Well, I like the whole life concept of permanent insurance and coverage till I die or age 100, but, and the cash value, but I don't want to pay forever. So the insurance company said, okay, well, here's what we'll do. We will create what are called limited pay policies. And they are just what they say. You pay for a limited period of time. So a guy is age 30. He could select to stop paying his premium at a predetermined age, like 50. And coverage would continue on until age 100. Now, two important things to know or note about these policies. The shorter the premium payment period is, the higher the premium will be, number one. And number two, they always mature at age 100. Maturity is when the cash value will equal the face amount and the policy will end and the person will get a check if they're still alive, the insured. That's always age 100 on whole life regardless. All we're messing around with is how long we're paying our premiums for. So we can predetermine a certain age called life paid up at age whatever. Or we could predetermine to pay it for a certain number of years called pay life, 20 pay life, 30 pay life, and so forth. Or we could pay one premium, single premium whole life. Now, if we pay one premium, obviously, we're going to have immediate cash value. And keep in mind, we're going to get a discount for these policies because we're getting that money to the insurance company faster. Now, as I said earlier, two things you got to know. Shorter the premium payment period, higher the premium is going to be. We're paying it for a shorter period of time. When do these policies mature? Age 100. Okay, so you've got to know that on all three of these. Okay, so we go on to page 35 in the center of the page. Modified premium and graded premium whole life. Maybe a question or two on these. Again, we're messing around with the premiums that are paid into the policy. We have modified, we have graded. Here's the difference between the two. They both were created to get a person into whole life at a discounted premium. But here's the difference. Here's how modified works. Here's the discounted premium, then it increases. Graded increases gradually at a discounted premium and then levels off at a certain point in time. So modified whole life, we are at a discounted level premium for a certain period of years, then it increases once and goes to an amount higher than we normally would have paid. Graded is a gradual increase in a discounted premium and then it will level off at some point in the future at an amount higher than we normally would have paid how we purchase straight or continuous premium whole life. So that's really the big difference there. So for example, if I'm a med student and I want whole life, I would most likely purchase one of these two policies. Okay, so we can go ahead and skip over endowments because we'll get to those in a little bit. And we'll talk about on the top of page 36 what's called enhanced ordinary life, also known as economatic. Now, this economatic product really is kind of a hybrid product, but it was created to help a person, again, get a certain dollar amount of coverage in whole life using a, um, kind of a mix of different products. So with economatic, here's what we're doing. Uh, we'll say that we want $100,000 of coverage. Okay, so we purchase a whole life policy with a $75,000 face amount and a decreasing term policy with a $25,000 face amount. So total, we're getting $100,000 of coverage. However, we are doing it in an economatic way. So we're combining whole life 
which this is a level death benefit with decreasing term. So right off the bat, we have $100,000 of coverage. However, as we'll learn soon, in decreasing term, the amount of coverage goes down. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use dividends that are paid from our whole life policy to purchase us more whole life insurance that will increase as time goes on. So as the decreasing term side goes down, the whole life policies we're purchasing with our dividends will offset that. So it's the economatic way to do it, and most economical, so they call it economatic life. And it's basically a combination of those three things. Now, we haven't talked about decreasing term yet. We haven't talked about the dividend option that you would select to do this. So we'll get to that there in a while. Okay, then we go to flexible premium policies. These are very important. A lot of times, a lot of questions on these on the exams. We start with the first one, adjustable whole life. Question, what's adjustable? Pretty much everything. The amount of coverage, uh, the premium you pay. So the key, flexible premium policies. These other policies we've been talking about so far, level premium. The premium never changes. Well, what if I work on commission? You know, I work on commission. I don't have a fixed income. Well, how do I get paid? You know, how am I going to pay my premium? If I have a level premium, I might not be able to make that payment this month. Well, if I have a flexible premium policy, then I pay whatever I want whenever I can. So we see in that paragraph it says, and even in the last sentence in the next paragraph, increasing the premium will cause the face amount and cash value to increase as well. And um, remember, you can annually, usually with adjustable whole life, apply to have an increase in coverage. So they say there in that first paragraph, generally without any underwriting as well. And then we get to the big daddy called universal life. And this is what a lot of people have these days when you talk about whole life insurance. A lot of people are familiar with this. But universal life was brought out in the 1980s when interest rates were very high. And it was created to take advantage of those high interest rates. So remember so far when we talk about these fixed products, whole life being a fixed product, we had a guaranteed minimum rate of return such as 4%. That's what we were getting paid. No, no more, no less. Okay. Well. As interest rates went up, people wanted a product that had more of a current rate of return. And therefore, the insurance companies created universal life. Now, sometimes what you might want to write in there, universal life is referred to as interest-sensitive whole life. And that's essentially what it is. Now, two things as far as the exam goes that you'll definitely need to know. Uh, you would need to know what the um, interest rate. So we have the current interest rate in universal life. Now what we're talking about the cash value. It, the cash value gets paid a current interest rate. So you need to know what the current interest rate is made up of. It's made up of two things. Minimum guaranteed and an excess interest rate. So say the minimum guarantee is 4% and the excess the first year is 3%. Stack those on top, 7% tax deferred minimum on the cash value during the year. Now. This 4% minimum, that's guaranteed for life of the contract. The excess rate is something that's calculated on an annual basis. So it could go up, could go down, related to interest rates in the economy. Okay, so that's current interest rate is made up of those two things. Then also, something that's different is, we have two death benefit options. <clears throat> we have option A, option B. Option A is the face amount. Option B is the face amount plus a return of the cash value to the beneficiary. So you have the choice. You buy this policy, you can purchase death benefit option A or death benefit option B. Option A is the same as what we've been talking about with the straight whole life policies. B is the death benefit plus a return of the cash value to the beneficiary. Which one of these two do you think would be more expensive? Answer. B, obviously, if they're going to return the cash value, then it's going to be a much higher premium for that coverage. A couple other things to know on Universal Life, it's a fixed product. So you only need an insurance license to sell it. Um, also, flexible premium. Very important you know that. Flexible premium policy. So in that first paragraph in Universal Life, uh, put a star by the first sentence where it's underlined, flexible premium. Also in there, the next sentence says, universal life policyholder may increase the death benefit without buying another policy, although they may have to prove insurability to do so, meaning go through a physical examination. Also, I like this, policyholder has the flexibility to reduce the death benefit if needed. Bottom of the page, current interest rate, I said, is made up of two things. Number one, minimum guaranteed, and two, the excess interest rate. 
Now we go to page 37. Here's our death benefit options at the top of the page. Number one, option A, level death benefit. And option B is going to be the death benefit plus a return of the cash value and increasing amount of coverage. Third paragraph from the bottom on 37, we have flexibility of premium payments. So highlight that, star that. It's underlined, very important, flexible premium policy. Uh, second to last paragraph, there's where it's underlined. I said this is sometimes referred to as interest sensitive whole life. Uh, last paragraph on the page, this is something you, you need to highlight. It says benefits provided by traditional life, such as continuous premium whole life, are referred to as bundled or packaged, meaning they cannot be viewed separately. Universal life is unique in the fact that uh, it's unbundled. You can view the benefits separately within the policy. And in fact, uh, they'll actually state what the cost of the mortality expenses for the year. If you don't pay your premium, they will just subtract that from your cash value account. So if at any time you don't pay your premium, they'll just take the cost of insurance for the life insurance portion of the coverage right out of your cash value. Okay, so that's kind of a, a different concept. But just remember, transparent or unbundled benefits in a universal life policy, bundled in a whole life traditional policy.